I'm Robert Bell. I'm Senior Curator of Decorative Arts and Design at the National Gallery of Australia. I'm talking about one of the earliest pieces of Australian furniture uh, in the collection. It's a cabinet uh, designed as a, as a bookcase. Uh, it's called a secretaire bookcase and it was made about 1804 by the uh, Irish trained cabinet maker Lawrence Butler. Uh, got himself caught up in the um, Irish rebellion, was convicted for aiding the murder of a loyalist and transported to, to New South Wales in 1802. He served his sentence. In the early days of the, the colony, skilled, skilled tradesmen were very rare, and so his skills came to the attention of Philip Gidley King, who was the governor of New South Wales uh, at the time, and he commissioned this piece of furniture in a way to provide something for his own needs uh, as a naval officer, uh, but also to show off the use of Australian woods uh, and furniture. Um, this had been something of a something of a tradition uh, that grew in the early days of the colony. Instead of just sending wood back, uh, they would send back fine pieces of furniture to say, well, look, here we are uh, out here in, in New South Wales. You know, we're not all um, you know, living, you know, living in tents. You know, we live in fine houses. We know about neoclassicism. We know about design. We know about architecture. And uh, we also know that we, can, we have very fine uh, craftspeople uh, in the colony and here's somebody I've worked with and here's something I've commissioned. So the, the piece was made for his own use. Um, it's what we call campaign furniture, used by the British military uh, all around the world and, and it simply meant that it was furniture that broke down into, into smaller pieces. It's made of cedar uh, and rosewood, veneered on the front with Australian casuarina. Uh, this particular cabinet's in the style of the late 18th century uh, what we call a neoclassical revival. It had a number of names. There's a very interesting detail, which is the black, uh, little black stringing around all the drawers and the, and the edges of, of each piece. Uh, it's called cock beading, uh, which is a trade term. And what it, what it usually was done with uh, was ebony, uh, to give this little hard black edge so the edges of the drawers didn't chip. Um, Admiral Nelson, uh, died in, in 1805 and in, in commemoration of his death any furniture that was government furniture or made for military or naval purposes um, was um, decreed to be proper if it was lined in black. Now uh, Butler didn't apparently have much access to ebony at the time but he did have access to a very interesting material which is whale baleen. It opens up, it has uh, secret drawers, um, it has a um, tantalising little, little scrap of paper that talks about its provenance a little bit. It went back to England uh, when King returned, when he, he ceased being governor, returned to England. Uh, it was used in his own house, passed down through his family. It returned to Australia with a family member in 1832 and it remained in the same family until it was acquired by the National Gallery uh, in 2011. This piece of furniture is on display in, in our Australian colonial art galleries. Uh, it's important for a number of reasons. It's uh, an extraordinary piece of furniture for its design, for its manufacture, for its use of Australian materials, its connection with a known maker, which is very unusual for that period, and a known person who commissioned it. So it, it stays here uh, in the collection. Uh, it puts uh, furniture into the context of other, other colonial art, paintings, drawing and so on, uh, and builds for the public a bigger picture of the way that, uh, that design uh, played a part in Australian life in the early part of the 19th century.